let's go back to the beginning of the, the first big bad. Okay? The greatest mistake. Right here. Some idiot, like a billion years ago, walked on land to lay eggs or something. And uh, now the rest of us have to pay taxes. So this is like the big starting mistake. Okay? Everything from here was downhill. Uh, sometimes literally. Because there aren't really any hills if you swim around in the ocean. So the concept of downhill was not even really a thing back then. So here's the thing, okay? After this happened, this mistake, time passed. And, uh, you know, animals got more complicated. And some of the higher animals, some of the more evolved animals, usually ones that have a social instinct, developed something that is a general trend you see in social animals, but in humans we call it tribalism. Tribalism is an intrinsic, evolutionarily determined predisposition we have towards favoring some groups over others, the tribes. We call it tribalism because tribe has a really broad, like, cultural and etymological root, meaning that it can apply to, like, a lot of different groups, you know? Like, people can be tribal over the sports teams they like. In fact, sports teams are one of the purest examples of tribalism because what sports team you like really doesn't mean, like, anything except usually where you grew up because people have biases towards their hometown teams. But some sports fans, are insane, you know? There's a culture of something called hooliganism in England, where football fans, that's soccer to us Americans, will literally, like, do riots over the results of their games, which is very wacky, very wacky stuff, right, you know? It doesn't make much evolutionary sense, you know? Like, well, why would animals competing for resources dedicate so much energy and potentially you know, risk themselves in the process of fighting over something which, like, objectively doesn't matter. And the truth of it is that tribalism, conceptually, is like a vestigial product of certain evolutionary psychological forces that are maybe helpful on their own, right? So if you take a look at tribalism in its historical context, like, um, literally, my tribe versus their tribe, because human tribes literally did fight with each other for a very long time. Having a kind of like instinctual bias towards the things you find familiar makes a lot of sense. Bias towards familiarity isn't even like a, a fault in reasoning, you know? It's actually a reasonable thing. You should be biased towards what you know, shouldn't you? You know it, after all. Very helpful in that sense. Fascinating. Cats also demonstrate tribal preferences. Just pattern recognition, right? Most of the things that make us really cool in our heads, it comes down to pattern recognition. The ability for us to learn, form patterns in our brain based on what we learn, and then develop new habits to respond to the patterns we've identified. Really cool thing that we can do, actually. Very, very, very helpful. Kind of simplifying hooligans. Yes, the hooligan cultural stance and chatter angry, but you do fight over your football games. Don't get mad at me for saying that. It's true. Just because there's more to it doesn't mean it's not true when I say that. Pigeon! Shh. Tribal meowing over there. Anyhow, I'm sure you can understand plenty of reasons why people might have cognitive biases that pull them towards things they understand. You know, Pattern recognition is right. A whole bunch of the way our brain functions is finding ways to quickly make snap judgments with the smallest amount of information possible. After all, if you never make any assumptions, you're not going to live very long in the wild, right? Oh, what's that bush rustling over there? Who knows? It's just a noise. What's this berry that looks exactly like the last berry I ate right before I got sick? Who knows? It could just look the same. Obviously, the ability to form patterns is really, really, really important for survival. Tribalism is just another kind of pattern-seeking, pattern-forming behavior. It's just a bias towards what you know. Can I help you? Over here, an example of a creature so simple that it actually can't form patterns in its head. For example, she has not yet seemed to notice that when the back room lights are on, and the bisexual lighting is an effect that I don't have time to play. A human would have understood this. But somehow, after years of living with her, she does not. Cognitive biases 
uh, that lead us towards pattern recognition have been evolutionarily helpful. They're still helpful to this day. The ability to make snap judgments based on basic assumptions is a critical part of basically everyone's thought processes. We do it all the time. How do you like identify red flags in a potential relationship? How do you recognize whether or not an area of town is a little bit more sketch and maybe you shouldn't walk down alleyways? Like stuff like that, right? You know, how do you like, well, what do you look for? You form patterns. Humans are good at it. Of course, the ability to form patterns and recognize those patterns doesn't always mean the patterns that you identify are correct, right? Like just because your brain is wired to identify things that you've seen and try to pull info from it, like assume stuff from it, that doesn't necessarily mean that the patterns you're looking for are accurate. Here's an example, astrology and horoscopes. People who believe in the power of astrology and horoscopes, like, oh, you're a Capricorn, you're a Cancer, you're a so on and so forth, because they're tuned in to this method of finding patterns, they will find those patterns. You see this all over the place. People who believe in horoscopes tend to find that humans fall into reliable patterns based on the months in which they were born, right? People who believe in ghosts notice a relationship between historical bad happenings in a neighborhood and like spooky noises at night. In reality, none of these things have been scientifically demonstrated, but people will swear by it. Now we look at that and laugh. We think, oh, ha ha ha. Can't you realize that social conditioning and personal experience are biasing your pattern, uh, your pattern seeking brain to the point where you're making like really stupid assertions? Can't you see it? Can't you, can't you see that you're doing that? We humans broadly would never do that. We would never allow cultural bias to inform the snap judgments we make about people based on superficial attributes. That would be silly. We are immune to those biases. No chance whatsoever of this happening to most people. The truth is, this bias towards pattern recognition is a universal fault in human reasoning. It is a fundamental problem with the way we form thoughts in the sense that it can produce negative outcomes. It can produce positive outcomes, but it also can produce negative outcomes. Much like any other process of reasoning, you need uh, an introspective mind. You need to be self-aware and self-critical to find what your brain is doing and try to correct for it. You know what I mean? Like, you may not be able to make your brain be a perfect arbiter of reason, but you can reflect and correct for the stuff that your brain is doing to try to understand when and why it might have been led astray. That's one of the reasons I really like sociological training, because it really teaches you to be willing to go like a couple levels deeper when it comes to um, stuff that might otherwise seem really obvious. So it's good to be critical about that stuff.